A reading from the book of the prophet Hosea. Thus says the Lord, Return, O Israel, to the Lord your God. You have collapsed through your guilt. Take with you words and return to the Lord. Say to him, Forgive all iniquity and receive what is good that we may render as offerings the bullocks from our stalls. Assyria will not save us, nor shall we have horses to mount. We shall say no more, our God, to the work of our hands, for in you the orphan finds compassion. I will heal their defections, says the Lord. I will love them freely, for my wrath is turned away from them. I will be like the dew for Israel. He shall blossom like the lily. He shall strike root like the Lebanon cedar and put forth his shoots. His splendor shall be like the olive tree and his fragrance like the Lebanon cedar. Again they shall dwell in a shade and raise grain. They shall blossom like the vine and his fame shall be like the wine of Lebanon. Ephraim, what more has he to do with idols? I have humbled him, but I will prosper him. I am like a verdant cypress tree. Because of me, you bear fruit. Let him who is wise understand these things. Let him who is prudent know them. Straight are the paths of the Lord, in them the just walk, but sinners stumble in them. Vebum Domini. I am the Lord your God, hear my voice. I am the Lord your God, hear my voice. An unfamiliar speech I hear. I relieve his shoulder of the burden. His hands were freed from the basket. In distress you called, and I rescued you. Unseen I answered you in thunder. I tested you at the waters of Meribah. Hear my people, and I will admonish you. O Israel, will you not hear me? I am the Lord your God. Hear my voice. There shall be no strange God among you, nor shall you worship an alien God. I, the Lord, am your God, who led you forth from the land of Egypt. If only my people would hear me, and Israel walk in my ways, I would feed them with the best of wheat, and with honey from the rock, I would fill them. Lexio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Marcum. Gloria Tibi Domine. One of the scribes came to Jesus and asked him, Which is the first of all the commandments? Jesus replied, The first is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. 
The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. The scribe said to him, well said, teacher, you are right in saying, he is one and there is no other than he. And to love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is worth more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered with understanding, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And no one dared to ask him any more questions. Verbum Domini. Laus Tibi Christe. When I'm driving places here in Birmingham or even when traveling like the Walk for Life in San Francisco, I marvel at our cell phones and how we can just jump in a car, pull up some maps program, punch in the address, leads us right there. We used to have to have these things called maps, you remember, and fold them up and never really use them for a city, but now even I can figure out the quickest way to get there in my own city. You can even see traffic problems. It's an amazing convenience to get us to where we need to go, where we have to go. The Decalogue, the Ten Commandments, are a path that leads us you know, to where we need to go in life. We're told in the first reading today, <clears throat> just at the very end, he said, let him who is wise understand these things. Let him who is prudent know them. Straight are the paths of the Lord, and them the just walk, but sinners stumble in them. Straight are the paths of the Lord. If we live by his teaching and his law, we have the best way, the clearest way, the surest way of getting to our destination. And when the Ten Commandments are given in the Old Testament, they begin with saying in Exodus, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. That's reminding them who God is, he's the one God, the true God, none of these other pagan gods, but he is the God that liberates us, brings us out of slavery, out of bondage. They were being led out of the bondage of Egypt, but we are in a more oppressive totalitarian dictatorship with sin, much worse bondage than physical uh, bondage even. And these 10 commandments that God reveals to his people is a path to freedom, is a path to human life flourishing. It's a path to how to live life in the fullness. And we see that it's God's initiative that he, you know, the, the people in, in slavery in Egypt, the Israelites didn't liberate themselves by fighting their way out, but God came to them, sent Moses to them, worked these great signs and wonders and led them out. It was God's work, it was his initiative. We speak of the Israelites as being his elected people, that expresses God's election for them, formed them as his people, uh, revealed himself to them, to them, and led them to the promised land. So it tells us that these commandments come from a place of love for us. God's reaching out to us, gives us these commandments. And we are to respond in love, that we are to call to reflect his glory in loving God and neighbor, as Jesus talks about to the scribe today, that these two pillars of the Ten Commandments, first three is love of God, next seven, love of neighbor, they're connected. They're two pillars of the law, and we can't have one without the other. That love of God draws us into communion with him, with God, and we could say, see clearly in the New Testament that we are members of his body and we're drawn into communion with others because we're united in his body. So love serves that communion with God and with one another in the body. So it leads us, the Ten Commandments leads us out of bondage, out of sin, out of slavery. And these are the straight paths of the Lord in which we are to walk. 
The commandments protect human dignity, namely by protecting human life, by protecting marriage, private property, truthfulness. These all serve the human community and serve us individually and personally, that we can have a full life. John tells us to keep the commandments, and when we do that, we abide in his love. That love of neighbor, he leads us to a love of God and vice versa. When we experience that love of God, we're impelled, compelled to love our neighbor. So, you know, going from the love of neighbor to God, we say that serving our neighbor opens our eyes to what God has done for us. You know, that we can, if we forgive our neighbor, we can come to a, experience that love, that mercy. We can come to a deeper experience of God's forgiveness for us as well. So the commandments are the basic conditions for the love of neighbor, what's required uh, for love of God and neighbor, and proof of our love for neighbor and the Lord. It's a first necessary step towards freedom from sin, that we are capable of this love because we receive it as a gift. In Romans 5, 5, the love of God has been poured into our hearts, that that informs us, that drives us, that gives us the grace to love our brothers and sisters and to love God himself. Pope Benedict put it simply, he said that love grows through love. So if we're loving our neighbor, we're going to grow in love of God. If we're loving God, we're going to grow in love for our neighbor. But these commandments, you know, they lead us to the kingdom. As Jesus tells the scribe, you're not far from the kingdom of God. They lead us there, but it's still God who fulfills, uh, that the fulfillment of the law comes from God himself, that the commandments themselves can't save us, that we are saved through faith and repentance. You know, the scribes, he says, not far from the kingdom, he's being led to the kingdom, but to be saved, we need to have faith in Jesus, we need to repent of our sins, turn to him and embrace him, trust him, have that faith informed with charity. That's how we enter into the kingdom. Jesus repeats the great Shema, we call it the daily, or the Jews call it, this their daily prayer. You know, some would wear the leather boxes, you know, strapped to their arm, the phylacteries with a copy of the Shema in it. We'll be here today to love God with all our whole heart, soul, mind, strength even put it on their doorpost in a little box to remind them that this is the heart of the law, that we are to, to live this throughout the day. So to love uh, with our whole heart means to make this choice in the depths of our very being. The heart is the place of decision, to say that I am going to live for God. I'm going to live according to his ways. I'm going to walk according to his ways that we're going to love him with our soul, this principle of unity of the human being. We're body and soul unity, so we're called to give everything of ourselves, our strength, he says. You know, I think of that as like the body, that we're going to give all our energy, our determination, our efforts to love God, to live his law, to live his law. and our mind, that we're going to keep our thoughts on the Lord, to have our, our reasoning even must be animated by the love of God, that that love is to inform all our actions and how we are to live. You know, that's living in the kingdom. That's living with a new freedom. That's experiencing everything that life has to offer in the sense that it's going to be in harmony with God and his plan is designed for us because our destiny is to be with him, to have eternal life. The, com the commandments are not limitations upon us. They show us the path. And in embracing them and in Lent, we look at how we failed in living those commandments. We can come to the kingdom in all its fullness.